him first. All right? Let's get um Deuteronomy chapter 6. All right, the scripture says, Hold every thought captive unto the obedience of Hamashiach. So literally, every thought that comes into our mind, we need to check that thought. Okay, wait a minute. Is this an obedient thought or a disobedient thought? Exactly. Is this an expedient thought, an obedient thought? You know, what type of thought is this thought? You know what I mean? Every little thought that comes into our mind, we have to be that disciplined and, disciplined and diligent to check those thoughts. Exactly. Let's go to Deuteronomy 6 and 1. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6 and verse 1. Now these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments, which Yahuwah, your power, commands to teach you. That, that you might do them in the land where you go to possess it. That you might fear Yahuwah your power. What? That you might fear Yahuwah your power. Mm -hmm. To keep all his statutes and his commandments. Which I command you. You and your son. And your son's son. All the days of your life. And, that, you're, and that your days may be prolonged. No. Every scripture that we see where it says keep the commandments of the Most High, it says keep His commandments. Keep His commandments. That shows ownership, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, all my parents in here, right? When you tell your, your, your child not to touch the microwave, and they do it anyway, are they disrespecting your command, or are they disrespecting you? Oh. Most importantly, yeah. you. Right. you. Exactly. Right? Because you gave the order. Right? I mean, that's why that like, for example, there's certain very small minuscule things that really aren't that big of a deal that I might ask my children to do. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> not put anybody on blast, though. You know, and it might not be a big deal. You know, so if you don't do it, you know, you could look at me like, you shouldn't get that mad. But I'm more mad about the principle that it was me. You didn't disrespect the command as much as you disrespected me. Exactly. You know what I mean? And it's I like, the same way with the most high. And I like what my aunt was saying, you know, even if it's a small thing. Right. Because the most high commanded us to do 613 things. How many of those do we consider small? Right. Let's get um, Sirach chapter 18 and verse 27. I mean, I don't kill the steel. That's what they can give to you. Exactly. The commander is disrespecting Like a lot of, you know, myself, I've been guilty of neglecting the command of wearing my seats and wearing my fringes at times. You know, but you have a mentality where it's not, it's, like, it's not like I'm committing adultery or stealing or killing. You know, I'm just wearing, you know, it's just, it's just my fringes. But it's the fact that he asked us to do it. We should have that type of reverence and fear and respect for him. Exactly. Whether it's minuscule or, you know, whether it's big or small. So rock 18 and 27. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the book of Sirach, chapter 18 and verse 27. A wise man will fear in everything. In what? In Woo! everything. So no matter if it's small, large, you think it's minuscule, you're going to fear in what? In everything. Read. And in the day of sinning, he will beware of offense. But a fool will not observe time. Okay. So now let's 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 actually just uncover this gateway scene, right? We dancing around a little bit. We don't get close. So I ask y'all, what is the significance of being number one? There's no one better than you. So if you first in a race, you're, you're, you're the most important. Right. You're no one, the, no one you're above the, you. Exactly. There's nothing above you. You the MVP, so to speak, right? Mm -hmm. Being first is very important. And they make that known in this in this world, mm -hmm. but it's also when it comes to the most high, right? Let's get Matthew 22 and 36. <laughs> 22 and 36. The book of Matthew, chapter 22 
and verse 36. Master, which is the great commandment in the law? What is the great commandment? Read. Yahushua said to him, You shall love Yahuwah your power with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. When you break this, you committing, I'm going to put it this way. If if you um if you like like my aunt said, if you don't wear your fringes, are you committing adultery? Are you stealing? No. Nah. Are you coveting by not wearing your feces? No. Nah. But you're not loving the most high with all your heart, mind, and soul. If you commit adultery, are you necessarily not honoring your mother and your father? No. Nah. But you're not loving the most high with your heart, mind, and soul. You putting your flesh or your spirit before the most high. Let's go to Exodus chapter 20 and verse 3. Of Exodus chapter 20 and verse 3. Start at verse 1 now because I want to I want everybody to get the feeling of, of, of what the most high is saying. Exodus 20 and 1. And Yah spake all these words, saying, I am Yahweh your power, which have brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim, out of the house of bondage. So he's making it known. I'm the one who did this for you. Read. You shall have no other gods before me. Whatever you put in front of the Most High is a what? It's a power. Right? Now I ask y'all again, what's the significance of being first? What's the reason that he gave this command as the first one? Because it's the most important. Any of these these commandments that follow, if you break those, you have already broken number one. Exactly. If you offend at one point, you are guilty of them all. Right? Let's get uh, 1 Samuel 15 and 23. In the same manner, just like Mashiach said, these, you know, I'll just paraphrase. This, this is like the root. And if we keep this one commandment, then it makes it so much easier. You hear me talking. It's so much easier to keep all of the other commandments. Exactly. If you're loving the Most High with all your heart, all your soul, all your being, etc., wholeheartedly, then it's easy to be like, okay, well, wearing, wearing fringes is no big deal. Exactly. Keeping the Sabbath is no big deal. This is the gateway sin. Once you put your flesh, your spirit, another power before the Most High, there's no telling what you're going to do next. 1 Samuel chapter 15 and verse 23. Just for you, Jamila. For rebellion. For rebellion. Is as the sin of witchcraft. Who are you rebelling against? It's as the sin of what? Witchcraft. What was supposed to happen to witches if they were found? Put to death. Fire. 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 Now, what is the end of this broad way? Lake of fire. Read. And stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because when you put something before the Most High, it's what? Idolatry. Read. Because you have rejected the word of Yahuwah. Because you have rejected what? Because you have rejected the word of Yahuwah. Now, when they was in the garden, was it any written down commandments? No. All they had to go off of is what the words of the Most High. Right? Read. He also rejects you from being king. Let's go to um, 1 Corinthians 10 and 14. Let me ask a question. Now, what if I keep that commandment? What if I keep the commandments, but I do so stubbornly? I do it in a stubborn manner. Am I still keeping the commandments? No. I kept the Sabbath, but I just didn't really want to. Well, your heart Exactly. Exactly. Because he said, love the most high with all your what? Heart. All your heart. And all your soul. But there were many that kept the outward appearance of keeping the commandments, but it wasn't embedded in their heart. Exactly. Outwardly, the they, they are a Jew, 
or an Israelite, but Italy, exactly. Yep, 10 and 14. What was the scripture? 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 14. Therefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. Flee from idolatry. Flee from putting anything before the Most High. Mm -hmm. All right? Now, um, to be real, um, we always think about the Most High. We are supposed to think about the Most High in everything, right? And everything is supposed to submit itself un unto the Most High. Before he created man, what did he create? The Shamayim, right? The earth, the, the animals, right? Everything is supposed to be in subjection to the Most High. Let's take a look at his power. Let's go to uh, Sirach 18. In verse 1. Sirach 18 and Book of Sirach, chapter 18 and verse 1. He that lives forever created all things in general. So he that lives forever created all things in general. The most high created everything in general. Read. Yahuwah only is righteous, and there is none other but he. Read. Who governs the world with the palm of his hand. With the what? With the palm of his hand. Read. And all things obey his will. It says, now all things obey his will. Let's go to Jeremiah 5 and 21. Let's see. Let's see this power. And let's see when we when we break these commandments, what we up against. Chapter 5 and verse 21. The book of Yermiyahu, chapter 5 and verse 21. Hear now this, O foolish people, mm -hmm. and without understanding, which have eyes and see not, which have ears and hear not. Now, we in the truth, but still, if we break in this first commandment, we still not see it. We still can't see clearly. We still not hearing clearly. Because he's saying, I am the most important thing to you. Mm -hmm. Realize that, right? Read. Fear you not me, saith Yahoo. Fear you not me? Read. Why Will you that? not tremble at my presence? You're not going to tremble at my presence. Read. Which have placed the sand for a bound of the sea by a perpetual decree. So he placed the sand as a as as a bound to the sea. Right? How much water is in the sea? In right? measure. Read. That it cannot pass. And though the waves thereof toss themselves, yet can they not prevail, though they war. Yet they cannot pass it's over it. All of this water, these waves is a coming, right? All of this water, but they still don't cross that line. It's obeying the commandments of the Most High. Now, when we didn't obey the commandments of the Most High, the whole world was spent into a word. Now, imagine if those waters didn't obey the commandments of the Most High. Right. There would be no life. Right? We see that with the flood. Right? Read. But this people has a revolting and rebellious heart. Mm -hmm. They are revolted and gone. They gone. When, when you don't put the most high first, you are up out of there. No matter how you spin it. No matter. Well, I, I, I might not wear my fringes, but I, I don't commit adultery. That don't matter. You're still offending in one portion of the law. Whether you think it to be small or great. You get what I'm saying? I mean, we, we're not going to necessarily touch into these. Well, I am going to go into Solomon. But think about the, the, uh, the first king of Israel, Saul, right? When he told him to go in, kill a certain amount of people, kill everybody in this certain land, right? Don't bring back nothing. Kill everything. And he brought back the best of the cattle. Right. He spared the king. He put, what well, he say, the people. He feared the people. But guess what? 
he put the people before the Most High. Right? And he made the Most High say, he, he, he has to repent for what he did. Not necessarily that the Most High did something wrong. Be like, man, I, I shouldn't even let you do this. I shouldn't even agree to let Israel have a king because I am their king. Right? David. 2 Samuel and 11. Chapter 11. David committed adultery. What did he put before the Most High? Exactly. His flesh was put before the Most High. His lust was put before the Most High. And then killed her husband. You know what I'm saying? There's no telling what you would do when you're not putting the Most High first. This brother went to the lengths of killing this woman's husband to be with her after he already committed the sin. Just to cover his butt. Just to cover his butt. Let's go into Solomon. I want to go into Solomon because this was like one of the biggest examples other than Adam to this, this sin that we're speaking of. Now Solomon was uh, Solomon was the king, right? And we know he took on all of these different strange women. Let's get to Deuteronomy 7. He took on all of these strange women. Now the Most High commanded us not to do this and he told us the, the reason why. We're about to get that real quick. Deuteronomy chapter 7, and we're going to start at verse 1. We're just going through the examples of, we see the, the sin that these, that our foreparents committed, but we don't link them back to the very first commandment. So let's link these things back to the very first commandment and see if they would have kept that commandment, they would have been all right. Go ahead, uh, Deuteronomy 7 and 1. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7 and verse 1. When Yahuwah your power shall bring you into the land where you go to possess it, and has cast out many nations before you, the Hittites and Girgashites and the Amorites and the Canaanites and Perizzites and Hivites and Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than you. Mm -hmm. And when Yahuwah your power shall deliver them before you, you shall smite them. And utterly destroy them. You shall make no covenant with them, nor show mercy unto them. Neither shall you make marriages with them. Your daughter you shall not give to his son, nor his daughter shall you take to your son. For they will turn away your son from following me, that they may serve other powers. So will the anger of Yahuwah be kindled against you and destroy you suddenly. So he made the command, he said, Don't. Have no covenants with these people. Don't marry their women. Don't do none of that because they're going to drive you away from me. Let's go to 1 Kings chapter 11. If Solomon would have just listened and would have thought, man, I got to keep the most high first. And not thinking with his flesh, we might not be in this position today. 1 Kings chapter 11, and we're going to... Start at verse 1. First Kings chapter 11 and verse 1. But King Shalomo loved many strange women, mm. together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Zidonians, and Hittites, of the nations concerning which Yahuwah said to the children of Israel, You shall not go into them, neither shall you come in, they come in to you. For surely... They will turn away your heart after their gods. Shalomo clave unto these in love. So he went directly against the commandment. Just like his father, he was thinking with his flesh. Right? Let's go down to verse 4. Verse 4. For it came to pass, when Shalomo was old, that his wives turned away his heart after other gods. And his heart was not perfect with Yahuwah his power. As was the heart of Dawid his father. For Shalom went after Astoreth, the goddess of the Zidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. And Shalom did evil in the sight of Yahuwah, and went not fully after Yahuwah, as did Dawid his father. Then did Shalom build a high place for Chemosh, and the abomination of Moab, in the hill that is before Jerusalem. And for Molech, the abomination of the children of Ammon. Mm -hmm. And likewise did he for all his strange wives, which burnt incense and sacrificed to their powers. 
So he turned around and turned his heart away from the Most High. He started worshiping other gods just because he didn't put the Most High first. You know what I'm saying? There's no telling what you will do when you don't think about the Most High first. When you're not in your right, this, this is what I call being insane. Not putting the Most High first is not being in your right mind. Because, again, there's no telling what you will do. Right? In verse 8 right here it says, And so he did it for all his foreign wives. And it says that they burn incense and slaughter to the mighty ones, to, them, you know, to their gods. Right. So, I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he was, if at this point in time, you know what I mean, that prefrontal cortex is shutting down. He's not thinking soberly, like the scripture tells us to. And he's almost trying to, to reason with himself to justify himself and say, well, I'm not doing it. It's just my wives. You know what I mean? I didn't build, build these high places for myself. I built them for my wives. I'm not bound down to these guys. My wives are doing it. So, I mean, but that's foolishness. That's insanity. But that's what we do. We play mind games with ourselves and try to deceive ourselves into thinking that we're still right with the most time. Now, let's get, let's get Adam in the, in the Apocrypha. We know what he did, right? Let's look at the key words in, the, in, in this scripture. This is uh, 2 Ezra chapter 3 and verse 7. And we're going to close out right after this with a couple scriptures on how we can go, get, get away from this gateway sin. Chapter 3 and verse 7. Oh, 2nd Ezra chapter 3 and verse 7. Second Ezra chapter 3 and verse 7. Who did hold on, who did who did Adam put before the most high? His wife, right? Let's read. And unto him you gave commandment to love your way. He gave commandment to do what? To love your way. What we know was that he said, don't eat from the tree. But he gave the commandment to do what? To love your way, mm -hmm. which he transgressed. And immediately you appointed death in him uh -huh. and in his generation, of whom came nations, tribes, people, and kindreds out of number. And every people walked after their own will and did wonderful things before you. And despise your commandments. So because he didn't love the ways of the Most High. Which the Mashiach said is the first and great commandment. Death was entered into the world. Every Everybody that, that, that followed after Adam fell in his footsteps. You know what I'm saying? So we got to keep these things in mind, man. That Keep the Most High first. Always acknowledge the Most High in all your ways. It's not too late to repent. It's not too late. Because I guarantee, and some of us, I know in me, I've been getting myself together since I've been doing this lesson, that in some aspects I fall short and say, and didn't have the respect for the most high to say, I don't need to do that. I need to do this. You know what I'm saying? We all got to check ourselves, examine ourselves, and make sure that we follow in that first and great commandment because the rest is going to follow. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to get one more scripture. 1 John chapter 1 and verse 8. We all have to realize that, that we fall short of this major, major sin. You know what I'm saying? 1 John chapter 1 and verse 8. If we say that we have no sin... We deceive ourselves. So if any of us say that, I ain't doing that. I'm keeping the most high first with everything. We deceive in our own selves. You know what I'm saying? And what do they say the first step to recovery is? Amen. 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 You know what I'm saying? So right now, I'm admitting it. As the scripture said, I have that impiety or that lack of respect for the most high in some aspects. But we all need to get it together. Read. <clears throat> If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Mm -hmm. If we confess our sins, if we admit it. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So there it is. If you if you admit it, if you come to terms with it, he's gonna forgive you. He's gonna clear out that unrighteousness, and we can get back to the Most High. So, that was the gateway scene. 
With that, we say shalom. shalom.